गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स आई एम हियर अगेन फॉर द माई कोर्स एयरक्राफ्ट सिस्टम टूडे आई एम इन लेक्चर नंबर फोर्थ दिस बिलोंग्स टू द वेहकिल सिस्टम सब सिस्टम आई एम डॉक्टर वाई डी द्विवेदी प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एरोनॉटिकल इंजीनियरिंग हैदराबाद इंडिया I have started this course few days back and we have divided this course into four verticals in four verticals the first vertical was airframe or structural system and this is the second vertical that is the vehicle system and sub systems so <clears throat> in my structural systems i have explained that there are three major systems the primary major structural system is a wing wing consists of longerons spars stringers skins air foil shapes and different other small small components if you see about the second component is a empennage in empennage we have the tail part in tail part it consists of horizontal tail including elevators vertical tail including rudder and the last part of the fuselage like the wing our horizontal tail and vertical fin both are also made in the same way with the air foil and it also consists of a spar longerons stringers skins number of doors number of control panels uh, so many things are there which i have discussed in my previous class today i am going to further the vehicle system and in the vehicle system if you see that these topics i am going to cover so first i will be going for the revision of some previous covered topics then we will go to introduction to aircraft system then aircraft vehicle system which is the today's part this consist of flight control system propulsion system fuel system and hydraulic system so i will go one by one as per the given topics it is very much essential to understand that being the aeronautical or aerospace engineer this course is very important as the final product will come as a shape of some system let you design the structural design or propulsion design or aerodynamics flight mechanics anything it will come as a part of system and how this system is working how the functions what principles are used to function of this aircraft aircraft systems we have to understand then only we can get the full knowledge of the aeronautical engineering now if you see that in vehicle system i already told in my previous class that aircraft systems it can be divided into the four vertical this first one which i have covered in my the previous class and this is the aircraft structural structural system this is also called air frame system air frame system so this is the first vertical this is the second which we are working today this is the third one it is a navigation 
navigation systems and this is the last one is mission systems mission system so we have covered this first one first vertical today we are in the second next class we will go for the third one and next to next we will go for the uh, fourth one and slowly slowly we are going to cover in detail but as of now this is the we are in the unit one or it is also called the unit one or module one in this we are just going as an introduction part only i am going only introduction of this all part all the verticals introduction only not in detail how it, it is working so just as we before we start anything we should understand what is there inside so in this aircraft system course which is in the sixth semester as of now we have to understand that how many basic classification we can divide so we can divide the aircraft systems into four basic as mentioned here airframe systems or aircraft structural system then vehicle system which is shown here as a red then navigation system and mission system and here we i will give the introduction only not in detail okay so this we have to understand now <coughs> the flight control system i will be if i talk about this uh, uh, flight control system the vehicle system is the f the the first major component is the flight control system so if i draw a diagram here just this you can see here this is the aircraft and i think you all know this is the wing this is the horizontal tail this is the rudder this is the elevator here okay so we can see here that here is we have one wing here also so i will just draw like this one wing here one horizontal tail is here this is also here one elevator is here this is the rudder this is the elevator this is the horizontal horizontal tail or horizontal stabilizer this is here elevator the elevator is is a one of the primary control which makes the nose up and down if you see here we will have here one aileron both side one one each this is the aileron aileron here also and this is also aileron this is the wing this is here cockpit cockpit and here you will have so many passengers doors this is called fuseless full this part you can say the fuseless and in our from here this part is called the impenes impenes this whole total part i am just making as a dotted line here this is called impenes and this hole from here to here this is called the fuselage this fuselage and these are the wings so the total structural system we can divide into three parts major parts these parts are called the fuselage fuselage can be further divided in number of parts like nose like this then another center part then third part and then here we have the impenes here all this impenes part okay so this mo mostly they are all are the in a cylindrical shape where the passengers and other things are accommodated here pilot is sitting in the 
cockpit. This is called the cockpit zone, nose zone. Okay, so in this way, so I, I am here, I want to make that, what is the flight control? We know that if you see the axis system of the aircraft, so this is the X, so this you can make as a Y and this you can make it as a Z, so this is in the X, this is the X from here and from here this is the Y and from here vertical down is a Z. It is, I am showing the positive direction. So if you see your aircraft has got 6 degree of freedom. DOF. DOF means degree of freedom. So aircraft can go 3 linear motion, 3 linear motion and 3 rotational motion. Okay, so this combination of three linear motions and three rotational motions are called the six degree of freedom. If you talk about three linear motion, three linear motion. So if the aircraft is moving in X direction, it is one. If it is moving in the Y direction, it is one and there is a two. And if it is moving in the Z direction, it is 3. It is linear motion. It can go, okay, just you can see here, this is the X, linear X. And if it is moving in this direction, it is a linear Y. And if it is moving up and down, it is called linear Z. 3 are the linear. If we rotate this thing with respect to X axis, then there will be a roll. It is called roll. Roll is happening with the longitudinal axis or the x axis. And if it is pitching, pitch will happen with respect to y axis or the lateral axis. So, another motion which is a rotatory motion or rotary motion, and this is called the pitching. In pitching, we will have nose up and nose down, and this third one is the yaw motion. Yaw motion is with respect to the vertical axis. This nose will go left or right with respect to the vertical axis. So we have six degree of freedom. Aircraft will have most time, mostly will have the sixth degree of freedom. And if you see the ground vehicle, no ground vehicle will have six degree of freedom. But aircraft, as it is a floating machine, it will have six degree of motion. But how we can get this? how we can get all this six degree of motion the equipments which are used to give this six dog motion is called the controls and we have in our aircraft we have three primary control the first one is elevator elevator is used to make nose up and down it is called pitching up or pitching down it is done by the elevator an elevator is shown here. So how this elevator is affecting? How this elevator? Here, assume this is the CG of the aircraft. And here you are putting, assume you are putting this elevator down like this. Like this. If you are putting this both elevator down, then what will happen? Here angle of attack will increase. And here lift will be increase this lift into this distance from here to CG. This is the X, X bar I am writing. So this lift into X bar, this moment will be anti-clockwise direction. Aircraft will go nose down. If your elevator is going down, aircraft nose will be down and vice versa. If you want to make elevator up, then lift will be towards the downwards. And this downwards lift into this X, this will make nose up. So this is a one motion and this is called the longitudinal motion. And this longitudinal motion consists of the two linear and one rotation. Two linear are X motion in X and in Z. And then X Z plane. 
this three motion and they are in the x and z plane so they are called the longitudinal motion in other uh, three motion one is sidewise y direction linear in y direction it is one and then rolling with respect to x axis and your yawing with respect to z axis so this three rotation in in this uh, another one is called the in that we have the two rotation one is yawing another is rolling and one is linear it is in y direction so if aircraft is drifting towards the right side of the pilot it is a positive linear motion if it is in the left side of the pilot it is a negative and if nose is going towards the right it is a positive and if towards the left it is a negative yawing roll when the right wing is going down it is a positive roll when left wing is going down it is a negative so this is the positive roll and this is the negative roll this is the positive yaw and this is the negative yaw so like this we have to see that all the six degree of motion are achieved and these motions are achieved by the help of three controls so one is the elevator i have just now explained elevator elevators are mostly in conventional aircrafts are fitted on the horizontal tail behind the horizontal tail this is the elevator another one is the rudder rudder is you here this is the rudder this rudder is used to make the yawing motion and third one is the ailerons ailerons are used for rolling so if i want to make pass to roll means right wing this is the right wing down if i want to make right wing down so this side lift should be high left side the wing should generate a high lift so high this lift how we can get the high lift by putting ailerons down this side ailerons should go down if the ailerons are going down this side and this side will go upward a negative this side lift will be high this side lift will be low and this this into this distance this y this this l into y this will make the rolling like this right wing down so like this we have to understand that which motion will make aircraft which side down or which side up we as an aeronautical engineer we should very much very much thorough i have seen that 50% of the students they are not aware if i put the aileron right up what will happen or if i put the rudder left what will happen if i put the elevator down what will happen 50% of the students are not aware please make sure that you understand things properly this is the basic if you are not understanding this then it will be very difficult to understand the further and same way if you want to make yaw left or right if you want to make yaw left so you have to put your rudder left direction so this uh, the force will be generated in this direction and this into this will make nose towards the left this is the left okay so in this way we can get the uh, direction of the aircraft so all this three elevator i have discussed then ailerons and third one is the rudder so all this three they are called the flight control system they are the flight control and how these things are operating it is called the flight control system so i am going to discuss today this all things and this you can see a small here um, animated video is there about the flight control and then you can see that how this whatever just now i have explained how these things are behaving and how we are able to get this all uh, motions i told you just now we have 6 degree of freedom and here i have shown you the roll if i ask you which control is making the roll which control is making the pitch and which control is making the yaw roll is made by the ailerons pitch is made by the 
एलिवेटर या इज मेड बाय द रेडर ओके सो दीज आर द कंट्रोल्स फ्लाइट कंट्रोल्स एंड दे आर कॉल्ड द प्राइमरी फ्लाइट कंट्रोल सो एलिरॉन्स आर यूज फॉर रोलिंग एलिवेटर्स आर यूज फॉर द पिचिंग एंड द रडर्स आर यूज फॉर द यॉइंग इट इज वेरी मच सोन हियर यू कैन सी दैट द रडर्स आर ऑपरेटेड बाई द पेडल जस्ट यू कैन सी हियर okay okay now you just see the rolling here if you want to roll left and right your elevate aileron will go left and up and down if you want to make this pitching or you want to make rudder okay just you, you see here this is aileron up and down okay you see how this aircraft is moving accordingly now if you want to make pitching up pitching down just you can see is it clear or not now yawing yawing by the foot so a b c we have here how this links are connected and how this links are moving this all things are explained here by this small diagram this you can see the elevator if you put this elevator this is the rudder this is the aileron aileron means just you see opposite both ailerons are affecting now elevator now rudder this hello rudder means air cut left or right okay so in this way we can find out how this controls are working now i will go for the secondary flight control so we have seen that most of the time and uh, uh, most of the conventional aircraft they have the only uh, roll pitch and yaw but if you see the bigger aircraft like a boeing Air, airbus bombardier and other aircrafts they are very big and we cannot take chance of only using the primary control sometimes the primary controls may stall may, may not be very much effective but we cannot take the risk of the passenger at any time so we have to use sometimes some secondary flight control and in this we have the high lift control then flap around and slats and the speed brakes these are here high lift control if you see here it is flap around here boeing 777 flap around is here if you see here here we have the speed brakes here these are used to reduce the aircraft speed during flight not on the ground it this speed brakes are not used during runway or during the taxi way they are used whenever aircraft is flying all of sudden we we want to reduce the speed of the aircraft we have to make this body up making this body up lot of drag is produced and this drag will make the aircraft to reduce its speed same way if you see here in this first diagram this is the slide high lift control it is a slide at the leading edge some like a aerofoil it is coming out we have some mechanism it is called the rack i have explained in my structural component the day that how this rack is working and pilot will operate and this part will come out as shown here as and when this is coming out the area of the wing is increased we know that lift is equal to half rho v square s c l so here what we are doing because we want some high lift so we have to increase the area so this s we are increasing by putting some additional aerofoil intentionally during landing and take off to increase the more lift you might have seen how this birds full aeronautical we have to first see the nature nature especially the birds and insects how they fly our journey of aircraft started with seeing the birds and insects so many people have sacrifice their life by mimicking the birds but they could not do like a bird still we have reached to mars and so many other planets human kind has reached 
But however, we are not fly able to fly like the birds are flying now or the insects. How the butterfly enjoying on the garden. How the dragonfly is hovering on your rooftop. So like this, our eager, we are very much willing to fly like these natural flyers, but not happen. However, I feel that few, maybe few decades after this, we will be able to fly like a bird, like a insects. A lot of research work is going on and we may get chance to fly from our rooftop. We can go to our relative's house from rooftop to rooftop. Okay, so this may happen in due course of time. So here we have modern all, all types of uh, uh, additional or the secondary lift devices. Here it is shown as a leading edge slat. This leading edge slat is protruded outside and it will generate some additional aerodynamic surface and it will create some additional lift. Okay. Now, as I am talking about the flight control system and just now I have shown you the conventional flight control system in that we have seen that the pilot is operating by the rods, by the wires, by the cable and pulley, your all the rudder, elevator and ailerons are moving. But nowadays there is a very advanced technology, it is introduced some three to four decades back and that is called the fly-by-wire system of aircraft and this system is shown here and this you can see here that the this is a electrically operated system and if you see here in fly-by-wire Airbus 320 we have the electrical control then we have hydraulic actuation of all surfaces so what happened elevons elevators ailerons roll spoilers tail plane trim slats flaps speed brakes lift dampers trims these all things are operated by the electrical pulse it is not a pulley type of what happened in the conventional this is a rod from here some another rod it will go to another rod from here there will be a pulley this pulley is connected with wire and this wire is connected one side by the rudder this is the rudder okay so rudder will move by hinge it will move left right left right so in this what happened a lot of motions are there and in this motion some mechanical linkages are there mechanical linkages bearings wires pulleys these all things after sometimes bit due to wear and tear bearings get jam link may get the cracks wire may break so there used to be a lot of mechanical failure and huge amount of incident and accident have taken place to avoid that and also the weight these all are so, so many from nose to tail they are moving and so many links rods weight of the aircraft is also increased weight of aircraft also increased so these mechanical issues plus weight is tremendously increased to avoid that some new concept of fly by wire has been introduced and this fly by wire system has replaced this all linkages rods pulleys and all and directly here this is the actuator here this is fixed here and this will be operated by the electrical pulse here electrical pulse pilot will operate a small switch here and this will go up or down as per the direction of the pilot okay so this has reduced a tremendous <coughs> safety has increased weight is reduced failure has been reduced this is the advantage of such type of fly by wire system So, 
we can see there here we have uh, further divided that electrical control and the mechanical control the still being the fly by wire few controls are also operated by the mechanical that is the <coughs> rudder tail paint trim these things are is still used by the mechanical system for the safety reason <coughs> so here we have seen that <coughs> slides i have now oh, before i have shown here this you can see this is the slide from here to here this is the slide and here it is shown here <coughs> this slide is from here to here it is extended as and when required here we have the flaps aileron and here flaps this is the outboard outboard aileron and this is the inboard aileron this is the inboard aileron and it is there are the flaps <coughs> If you see here, we have the roll spoilers. If you want to spoil the roll or you want to stop the roll, we have to raise these spoilers. The speed breakers, they are made 90 degree up, generate the huge amount of drag. It is shown here also. This you can see. This is the speed breaker here. The speed breaker. Okay, so they are lifted up. So it will generate the additional drag and it will create the necessary problems. Now, <coughs> the next issue is the propulsion system and how this aircraft propulsion system is working. We know that if any aircraft We need a, there will be always a weight of this aircraft. To counter this weight, we need a aerodynamic force upward, that is called the lift. Then only it can balance. But how we can get lift? We need some propulsion or engine, this is called the propulsion. This is called the propulsion. We need some propulsion or engine. This is all called engine. We need some system. Then only it will get some speed, velocity V. Then only we will be able to get the lift. If you generate the lift, we will get some drag also. Okay, so this is a simple force diagram of any aircraft. So we need a propulsion system or engine which should be able to fly the aircraft so if you see about the propulsion system <coughs> initially we have started with ic engine ic engine that is to piston engine piston engine right brothers has used the piston engine i will be showing in the next slide the same engine it was a four cylinder piston engine and how this piston engines are working so if you see here here that this is the cylinder this is the inlet valve this is the exhaust valve i am taking here a spark ignition so this is the s spark spark plug this is the exhaust and this is the inlet and there is a piston here this piston is connected with here crankshaft okay it is moving like this okay so this is here so this piston will move up and down 
Okay, so what happens? I will draw a PV diagram also for this engine and then you will see that this is the P and this is the V means volume, pressure and volume diagram. So I will start from here. It is a suction, move like this. From suction, it is a compression. From compression, it is ignition. From ignition, it is a expansion. This is the compression. And then this is the exhaust. This is the suction. This is the compression. This is here ignition. Okay, so <clears throat> just I'm showing this thing here and now I will explain how this piston engines are working. So initially I am assuming that this is the top TDC, top dead center and this is the bottom dead center. The piston is at the top dead center. From here, it is a petrol engine. Fuel and air mixture, fuel plus air mixture is, we have, we have to crank it. It may be like a scooter, you have to buy feet or buy the electrical starter. You have to press the switch. This will start cranking. Your piston will start moving down like this. As and when it is start down, inlet valve, inlet valve will open and here fuel and uh, petrol mixture, fuel and air mixture will be entering and when it reaches here, this is called the bottom dead center, but when it is reaching here, this full area is filled off fuel and air molecules. Now what happened? This will start moving upward. So all this area and in this time both your inlet valve and exhaust valve are closed. There is no passage to move. This much volume will be further compressed by this process. This is called compression. It will compress and this much only volume is left as shown here. A very high pressure and temperature will be generated at the end of this compression stroke here. If you see here, 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So 1 to 2, this is a 1 to 2, 1 to 2 you reached here. Now at this stage, you have a very high temperature and high pressure in this zone. You give a spark, by electric spark, your fuel will start burning. Due to this burning of the fuel, lot of energy is pressurizing again and again it will move in this direction again towards the BDC and this is called the expansion this 3 to 4 and 2 to 3 is a spark we are adding the energy in this and we are leaving the energy here leaving energy or exhaust and here we are adding the energy by spark plug adding energy so it will give the <coughs> high pressure and high temperature it will give here and it will leave here so this expansion will take place and this expansion is called the power stroke so here it is a four stroke so one stroke two stroke three stroke and this is the four stroke so out of four stroke it out of four stroke only one power stroke is there and it takes two revolution of the crank of the crank it means after this rotation because first from here to here and here to here one cycle and then this and this so two cycles will take two revolution of the crank will take to complete this IC engine function I think it is very much clear that and what is the need of the propulsion because if you want to lift your, your aircraft has to move it should give the proper velocity, then only a sufficient amount of velocity is required to get the lift more than the weight. Then only aircraft will aloft, otherwise it will be running on the ground itself. 
So we need some very high powered engine and those engines are called the propulsion and I have just now explained about the piston engine. Nowadays from 1960 onwards the turbo engines have been introduced for the aircraft and a very huge power of turbo engines are used in our aircraft. This I have divided here with the diagram and I have explained this type of engine were used for the Wright brothers. Flyer 1. Flyer 1. That is the Wright brothers. First aircraft was flown by this type of aircraft at Kitty Hawk, December 1903, I think. Okay. So, this Flyer 1 has used like this. After that, some advancement have come on this and we have got the radial piston engine. This you can see and here very high powered engines are generated. But after some time, the new invention has come and then they have started the gas turbine engine. In gas turbine engine, this you can see here, we have here <coughs> <coughs> compressor part, then combustor part, then we have turbine part and from here if you see, if it is a turbo jet engine, a nozzle will be there for the turbo jet and if it is the propeller engine, this shaft will operate the propeller and so on. If it is the fan engine, a fan, turbo fan will be added here. But all will have the compressor, combustion chamber and turbine. That is why it is name is given as a gas turbine engine and they are called the reciprocating engine. So this is a propulsion system we can divide in basically two major parts. One is a reciprocating engine. In reciprocating engine, we have the four stroke engine, two stroke engine. In four stroke also and two stroke also, we have the spark ignition engine and compression ignition engine. Spark ignition engine, we use the spark. They have the, mostly they use the petrol and small engines of aircrafts like use the petrol and this petrol is called our gas, aviation gasoline. The fuel used for this gas turbine is A, A, T, F, K, minus 50. This is the for GT engine. And for the, this we use the our gas. This is the fuel used. Okay, so uh, I have explained about this uh, reciprocating engine very well. Now I am going to discuss about a gas turbine engine. So here <clears throat> I have given the animation for the turbo fan engine. This is called the turbo fan engine and this type of engines nowadays used in most of the aircraft. Most in aircrafts use turbofan, most aircraft used this engine nowadays. Okay, so <clears throat> first I will go one by one as I have given here some diagram and we can see here the first one is a here <coughs> from here this is the inlet air is entering here these are the compressor first it goes to the low pressure compressor here you can see the spooling spooling means two sets of the compressor and two sets of the turbines so this is the low pressure compressor Another is, this one is the high pressure compressor. This black color is high pressure turbine and this is low pressure turbine. HPT, high pressure turbine. LPT, low pressure turbine. Then here we have the combustor. It is also called the combustion chamber. Here we have the high pressure compressor and here we have the low pressure compressor. So like our piston engine, here also air is entering here. In low pressure compressor, 
it is compressing and it gives to the high pressure compressor this high cap pressure is pressurizing very high ratio and it goes to the combustion chamber here the high pressure air only and then the fuel is injected here and this in injection initially a spark is also given only for starting so here a spark is taking place and it gives a very high pressure and high temperature p and t are very high this high pressure and high temperature gases are hitting the high temperature or high pressure turbine and it is rotating at a very high speed comparing to the low pressure turbine the low pressure turbine is used to operate all other necessary equipments okay so here and this goes to the nozzle and this nozzle will give a thrust that is why here we have only three stages of the turbine if the stages of turbine are less you can see that it is a jet engine it is not a propeller engine if you see here the propeller engine here the propeller so it is a jet turbo jet engine turbo jet this is the turbo prop turbo prop engine so what happened here again air is entering here it is pressurized in each here one is to 1.2 only pressure ratio is there if it is one bar it will every stage it will be 1.2 it will be increasing like this then here we have the high pressure compressor and here we have high pressure turbine and here low pressure turbine and they are the low pressure compressor so here also same thing is happening but here the exhaust is not much exhaust is not much here we have more stages of turbine more stages of turbines required so all the power of the gases will be absorbed by this turbines and this will be moving the propeller that is the objective of this so a very very 5% only exhaust goes waste remaining 95% is used to drive this propeller so all this turbo prop engine are acting like this but nowadays we have a turbo fan in turbo fan we have the high bypass high bypass ratio and this is the low bypass ratio Okay, high bypass ratio and low bypass ratio. If you see in this high bypass ratio, a very big fan is used in front of the turbine and it is rotated with help of the this shaft. So if you see here the area of this and area of this, this may be 2 is to 1. So it is it is a high bypass and if you see here it is a one by one means 50 percent going from here and 50 percent is going from the core but here 65 66 is going for, from the fan and only 30 to 35 are entering from the compressor so it is high bypass ratio and it is a low bypass ratio nowadays for the passenger aircraft we use the high bypass ratio turbo fan engine and for nowadays fighter aircrafts like F-16, your uh, Rafale, all this type of engine, they use the low bypass ratio, low bypass BPR, low bypass ratio engines are used. And how these things are working, a animation video is shown here. And this you can see here that the air is entering here almost nearly this is one is the inlet two is the fan three is the low pressure turbine uh, compressor four is a high pressure compressor five is a combustion chamber six is a uh, high pressure uh, turbine and seven is a low pressure turbine eight is a exhaust nozzle red shows the burnt gases if you see here all blue 
colors are not used for burning purpose. If you see lot of arrows are going, but out of that 50% of air, only 15 to 20% is used for the burning. Remaining further it goes without burning and it is cooling the turbine. So this type of engines are very efficient. Turbines are not in a very high stress. Temperature of the turbines are uh, not so high. It can be used for uh, very good efficiency. Nowadays, most of the engines used use such type of system. So I have explained about the propulsion, the piston engine or the reciprocating engine as well as the uh, turbo engines and this four types of turbo engines are used in most of the aircraft nowadays. Further, I am going to discuss about the propulsion, how the propulsion system is used for other purpose other than, other than the engine operation. You know that we have the engine and the, some part of the air from the engine is taken out. That is called the bleed air. So what is the bleed air? Bleed air is the air which is taken from a compressor. Just you can see here, just I will show you here. This is the low pressure compressor and as it is passing here, from somewhere here, we will take the hot air because it is a compressed. So only air is there. So if the hot air with high pressure is trapped, it is called bleed air. So it can be taken from any type of engine. In this also and everywhere in each turbo engine, we take out some engine, but we cannot take out this thing from a reciprocating engine because in reciprocating engine, total air is burnt. It is not possible to take the bleed air from the reciprocating engine. So here we take the bleed air and where this bleed air is used, the bleed air is used for anti-icing system. In all the cool areas where very high minus 35, minus 70, like in India, Ladakh, Kashmir, Canada, in uh, uh, so many other countries, Russia and all, they are facing a lot of uh, winter and there uh, it is used to de-ice, uh, anti-ice the system. So they have to remove before flight, otherwise uh, so much ice is formed and this ice <coughs> will affect the performance of the aircraft, performance of the engine also because the ice will accumulate inside the engine also. So we have to have some method so that we can remove the ice which is formed on top of the air. So the, that is first is the purpose is anti-icing system. So this hot air is blown in the wing in the other part where ice is formed and slowly slowly it is melt and it is removed. Then this air is also used for the pressurization. Oh, why we need the pressurization of the aircraft? Because when aircraft is going some altitude, the pressure of the atmosphere is, is falling down. A human is habitual of to survive in the surface of the earth and there is some standard pressure of the atmosphere. In that pressure and temperature, a human feel very comfortable. But if the temperature and pressure is falling or going very high, both are not comfortable. So, and also the structural part, if the it is flying at a very high altitude, the atmospheric temperature uh, pressure will be very low and inside the cabin pressure will be high. So there, there is a chances of the collapsing of the structural system also. So pressurizing is very important for the human being and we have to maintain in such a way that the pilot, co-pilot, the air hostages and all the crews plus passengers and also the equipments. Our equipments are designed for certain conditions, certain temperature and pressure. Those temperature and pressure has to be maintained inside the aircraft so that the aircraft will fly in a very optimum specified manner. So pressurization is also there, electronic control systems and the cooling, a 
Cooling means a required temperature 15 degree to 20 degree centigrade is required for any equipments which are operated all computers all the electronics your cockpit has to be maintained certain temperatures. So from here engines breed is taken or this is also taken from auxiliary power unit it is shown here it is an additional engine which is used from here also we can take the bleed air or from engine also we can take the bleed air and we can use as and when required in a different places. So the propulsion system is not only for the propulsion there are so many other systems which are operating by the help of propulsion system. Not only this your generator your alternator your uh, <coughs> So many other hydraulic pump, pneumatic pump, then uh, your oil pump, everything is operated by help of the engine itself. So, engine is very, very imp important. Your propulsion system is very important, uh, the component. So, if you want to design the aircraft, you have to think this concept only, not only flow and down. They should be also able to operate such type of systems of the aircraft. This uh, same thing is shown here as a block diagram which I have explained you. So here is the left engine and this is the right engine. Here is a pressure shut off wall, the shut off wall, here APU, auxiliary power unit, left wing anti icing. You see the air is trapped here or air is trapped from the here bleed here, 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 here. This may go to the right wing, this may go to the left wing, this may go for the anti icings and this may go for air conditioning of the pack 2, it, the right, left wing will go for the air conditioning of the pack 1. So different electronic control units and these things has to be used. Here the, you can see the bleed air, the, here the bleed air is used and this ECS it is for the cooling purpose. And this dotted line is for anti-icing here and this is for the pressurization. So this uh, legends are given. You, you can see that how these things are working and how this propulsion system is used for some other purpose as shown in this diagram. Now <clears throat> next is the fuel system. So if you see the aircraft, the fuel is very important and it consists of a huge amount of fuel every aircraft has to carry because the consumption of the fuel is very very high. If you see the Boeing and all they are carrying some 15 to 20 tons of fuel and they can fly up to 4 to 5 hours. So in per hour their consumption may be 2 tons to 3 tons per hour. So we have here the aircraft fuel system and engine fuel system. Once we talk about the aircraft fuel system, it consists of inside the uh, wings, we have the fuel tanks, inside the belly of the aircraft, we have the fuel tanks. From there, it is going to the engine, and then engine has got some pumps, it will suck from there and the wing fuel tanks are made in such a way that a limited and a constant amount of fuel will go from the each tank so that the center of gravity of the aircraft will not get disturbed. So what is the purpose of the fuel? Provide a reliable supply. The fuel system should provide a reliable fuel supply. This also should have a ground refueling system. Refueling means a truck is there from there the ATFK is put inside the aircraft. It is called refueling. Defueling is removing the fuel from the tank. In flight condition what should happen? A high pressure and low rates hydrant systems are used for ground handling and ground defueling. In flight functions fuel transfer. The transfer of the fuel should be very smooth. It should not disturb the center of gravity. It should not take any fire. It should not leak from anywhere. And if leak is happen, it's automatic, it should be healed. Healing of this thing should be self. Then engine feed, a, a proper amount of feeding of the engine is required as per the requirement of the engine. Fuel measurement, 
the fuel should be measured how much amount of fuel is balanced how much it is consuming what is the rate of fuel consumption it should be within the limit it has to be monitored by the pilot fuel management there is a system electronic system those systems work and they use the fuel management system then fuel jettisoning you see here your aircraft should be able to jettison the fuel as and when there is a problem of safety so there is a automatic system of aircraft in that if the center of gravity of the aircraft is not balanced the there is a float and there is a mechanism this mechanism will try to open the valve and the center of gravity will be maintained like this if aircraft is flying and the weight of the fuel is high or this side cg is going down so this side the fuel tank will release the additional fuel and the aircraft will be balanced especially during the landing you can see very well a huge amount of fuel is automated jet jet sending in the aircraft you can monitor very well in the runways and all. i have seen so many hundreds of time the so much fuel is jettisoned by the uh, aircraft it is automated and it is it is jettisoning to balance the aircraft during the landing so it is it is shown here this you can see here that a small amount of fuel is jettisoned and this shows that this side of the wing it is a left side of the wing is has got some extra fuel and your aircraft wing is not balanced so left side is down like this so if you release some fuel it will be again in the same so before landing just some two uh, 500 meter before the landing this will happen and this is automated and your aircraft has got such type of facility that it will jettison as and when it is required now further i am going for the fuel system and what are the other characteristics of the fuel system so this fuel system aircraft level requirement how much fuel is required and this is monitored by airworthiness regulation every country has got its airworthiness uh, regulation like in india dgca america fa and all they will give that how much fuel is required for which type of flight operator and design requirement then it goes to the tank location and the fuel storage requirement different tank how much fuel is required here is the system functions here the refueling and defueling engine and apu feed how much required for engine and how much required for apu fuel fuel transfer and the jettisoning what type of fuel transfer how much amount of fuel transfer and how much amount we can jettison this all things we should understand quantity measurement and indication how much fuel is available how much is consumed consumption and how much is the rate of the fuel this all has to be monitored on the cockpit by the and it all your indication should be visible fuel management and the control it, this is the um, uh, computer operated systems and it will operate and it will manage the fuel here fluid mechanical functions pumps valves and actuators are fitted in the fuel system and uh, sensors electronics and uh, software they are operating this measurement and management of the fuel control it is operated by the sensors electronics and the software this is used for avionics sensors and the harnesses and here we use the pump valve and actuators so these are the equipments this is the equipment this is the system this is the physical constant and this is the airworthiness we can divide this thing in this type of groups okay so this fuel system is divided in this uh, type of subsystems and in this way whole fuel system is working and your aircraft should get a sufficient quantity and quality it should be very nicely filtered it should be nicely precised by the fuel pump all things has to be monitored and aircraft has to uh, get a sufficient quantity of fuel so that it can fly nicely i have referred this book for uh, moyer and c bridge aircraft systems mechanical electrical and avionics subsystem professional engineering publishing limited london and th 
this book i have made this and any questions you are welcome to ask my email id is y d d w i v e d i at the rate gmail dot com this you can ask any question in this you are always welcome to ask thank you very much for the joining and be tuned for my next class and hope this will be very useful for all of you and encourage me for by, by seeing the videos if anywhere you feel that not clear you are welcome to ask your queries thank you very much for this joining my class like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates